dear students welcome to introduction to nanoscience and nanotechnology course lecture number 23 i'm dr pravez ahmed uh, in this lecture again uh, we will proceed with the nanomaterial characterization techniques uh, last time we had discussions on the spectroscopic method and the spectroscopic method we discussed about uh, the uv visible spectroscopy in this lectures uh, we will have a discussions on uh, uh, DLS uh, spectroscopy. So let's proceed towards today's lecture. Uh, what is mean by DLS spectroscopy? DLS stands for uh, dynamic light uh, scattering uh, spectroscopy. Uh, so what actually we have in uh, DSL are what uh, DSL uh, actually do with the sample. So be remember, uh, DSL basically measure the Brownian motions of the nanoparticles and correlate uh, this to the particle size. So this is uh, uh, the typical setup uh, for uh, the DL, uh, DLS. Uh, and here you can see uh, that we have a laser source and that laser source, we put a light on the sample. Uh, and that light is being, uh, I mean, scattered by the molecule of the particle. Uh, so that is being carried to, uh, I mean, to the computer to put the, a graph between uh, the intensity uh, versus the time. So, uh, uh, what actually DSL tell us? Uh, so, uh, are what the information that we get from the DL, uh, DLS? So, dynamic light scattering basically tell us about uh, the size of the particles as well as the distributions of the particle within a sample. Uh, that is, uh, I mean, in sample, what we can say that. Uh, it tell us about the homogeneity of, of the nanoparticle in a sample. I mean, we have a particular sample, and if you want to know how homogeneous uh, that sample is, so uh, that could be uh, done with the help of uh, dynamic light uh, scattering. So we have Brownian motions of the small particles, uh, and you know that uh, the Brownian motion of the smallest particle is faster than the larger particle. Uh, so the position of the smaller particle uh, loss correlation faster. So the principle, uh, what are the principle of DLS? So uh, DLS basically working on uh, the Meyer, uh, I mean, uh, in DLS, uh, DLS or dynamic light scattering, uh, we measure a variation in scattering intensity uh, with time it affects scattering angle, uh, which is typically uh, 90 degree. I mean, this is the typical uh, principle for uh, DLS. Uh, so uh, here you can see that uh, this principle is being summarized here. Uh, I mean, here you can see that we have a monochromatic laser light, and that light that are being bombarded on a sample. I mean, we have a sample cell. Uh, so here you can see that's the uh, the uh, uh, intensity that we put on the object, and then you, you see that here we have a scattering angle that's noted by Theta i uh, and the scattering intensity uh, that is being, I mean, deflected or reflected uh, through a particular, uh, I mean, uh, towards the detector, then detector then like to the computer. So dynamic light scattering measures uh, variations and the scatter intensity. So here you can see this the scatter intensity. And the scatter intensity is basically detected by uh, the detectors. Uh, so the scatter intensity with the time. I mean, the scattering intensity we denote, I mean, we talk with respect to the time, it affects scattering angle. I mean, this angle, it's a spec, uh, fixed scattering angle is normally uh, 90 degree. So this is unlike the static like scattering measure, uh, which uh, scattering intensity as a function of the angle. I mean, uh, this is the key difference between the static light scattering and uh, dynamic light scattering. So uh, uh, in scattering, I mean, in dynamic light scattering, we have a typical uh, angle that is equal to 90 degree, while uh, static light scattering measures scatter intensity as a function of angle. I mean, in dynamic, uh, uh, we measures, uh, I mean, the scattering measures variation uh, and scatter intensity with time at a fixed scattering angle. I mean, here, uh, uh, LDLS, uh, we measures uh, the, the variation and intensity with respect to time. But here in static light scattering, uh, we measure the intensity as a function of the angle. So this is the key difference between the dynamic 
and uh, the static light uh, scatter frame. So uh, the experimental side of the typical experimental side of you can observe here, you can see it here. Uh, this is the exact, uh, I mean, the experimental setup for uh, DLS. That is, we have a laser source. The laser source, uh, I mean, uh, here we arrange a lens to focus uh, uh, the laser beam at the sample. Uh, I mean, the sample is normally put here in the oven or at the cryo state. Here we have the analyzer, and from this analyzer, we put the information through optical fiber to the amplifier or PM tube. And this PM tube is onwards connected to uh, the computers. So the computer then the plot, uh, the graph, or uh, the spectrum for us. I mean, it's a correlation versus as uh, the time. So here's, uh, I mean, uh, this is the typical spectrum for uh, DLS uh, spectroscopy. That is, uh, we plot the intensity versus the uh, elapsed uh, times. So dynamics, what actually uh, we do in dynamic light uh, scattering? Or uh, one may ask that uh, what the dynamic light scattering do for us. So uh, this kind of spectroscopy measure uh, changes in scattering intensity over a short time scales. How much short uh, time scale should be? So we remember it should be uh, as short as a uh, millisecond, or uh, I mean the duration is as short as a millisecond. Uh, so uh, dynamic light scatterings, uh, I mean, in this kind of spectroscopy, uh, changes are related to the speed at which the particle moves. I mean, uh, whatever the changes we have, uh, these changes, they are related to the speed at which uh, the particles uh, move inside uh, the sample. So uh, this can be related to uh, the hydrodynamic radius, uh, R edge. Uh, which is given by uh, the Stoke-Einstein equations. I mean, it's the the hydrodynamic radius uh, of the sample, I mean, uh, that we denote by R with the subscript H, uh, I mean, which is given by the Stoke Einstein equation. Uh, I mean, the most familiar uh, Stoke Einstein relation is given by uh, this relation. So, this relation is used to measure the uh, hydrodynamic radius uh, in uh, dynamic light scattering uh, spectroscopy. So time and length uh, ranges of DLS. So here you can see uh, in this particular graph, I mean, uh, you can see the time and length ranges of the uh, DLS. So time range typically from 10 raised to power minus seven to uh, 10 raised to power three second. Uh, length, uh, length range uh, typically from 10 raised to power minus nine, 10 raised to power minus six meter. Uh, Q range, uh, Q range basically, uh, I mean, lies uh, typically in the range of 0 0.6 to uh, 2 and 10 raised to the power minus 3 for Armstrong. So, uh, therefore, uh, one can say that DLS is suitable for the fusion study of the macromolecule uh, such as polymer and large uh, biomolecule. I mean, this type of spectroscopy is particularly useful for polymers and uh, biomolecules because biomolecule you know that's mostly uh, i mean it's, uh, something like something like a plasma or something like uh, you see that i mean some sort of the liquid so uh what are the limitation of the dls uh, so you know that uh, i mean uh, like any other spectroscopy dls also has its limitations so uh, some of the most well-known limitations that include that uh, this kind of spectroscopy cannot measure the size of the turbid solutions. Along with that, it cannot measure the size of the aggregating or sedimenting particles. Uh, similarly, polar electrolyte materials are difficult to analyze and require uh, salt additives. Uh, surfacting like molecules that promote the formation of bubbles uh, can be problematic. Uh, the dynamic scattering spectroscopy instrument, I mean, uh, this is the look, uh, the outside look of the DLS uh, instrument. I mean, how the instrument looks from the outside. So it's, it's the typical look of the DLS instrument. And this is the typical graph uh, in which the number of fractions of gold nanoparticle versus particle size is measured by DLS has been uh, plotted. So here you can see that. Uh, number of fractions I use is being plotted the diameter of the uh, diameter of the particle. So this is the typical graph that one can obtain with the help of uh, DLS uh, spectroscopy.
So that's all we have for uh, DLS. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned with the next lecture because in the next lectures uh, we will proceed toward the images, uh, imaging methods uh, for nanomaterial characterizations. And as a part of that lecture, we will have discussions on transmission electron microscopy and scanning electron microscopy and chart. So stay tuned with us. Uh, I'll see you in the next lecture very soon. Till then, bye bye.